Bali has long been one of Australia's favourite holiday destinations. But if you flew on Jetstar, you may not have realised your flight attendants were being paid vastly different salaries. That's because, like many other airlines, Jetstar uses local and foreign cabin crews on the Bali flight, and the union isn't happy. We have chronically fatigued, untrained uh, workers who are scrambling to rub two pennies together, and that's a deadly recipe. Here we go, Australia! Jetstar revolutionised cheap air travel in Australia. But the budget airline model means every dollar counts. And when flights are as cheap as... Just $69. $39. $249. Money has to be saved somewhere. And Australian cabin crews are expensive. It's sail time at Jetstar. I do understand the, uh, that we are outsourced. Pochara Kosul Chunvijit spent four years as a Jetstar Thai-based cabin crew member. I just quit two weeks ago because of the conditions of the, uh, that they don't treat the staff very well. The biggest problem of the Jetstar Thai-based crew is that we don't earn enough. The Thai crews are employed by a local company called Holiday Tours and Travel. It's part owned by Qantas which also owns Jetstar. Thai-based crews are paid a base salary of about 390 Australian dollars a month, according to a contract leaked to 730. That's less than $100 a week. Their pay jumps by $10 an hour as a bonus when they're flying. And they get no annual leave for their first year. Jetstar declined an interview, but says once bonuses and overnight allowances are included, the average Thai-based crew member takes home about two and a half thousand Australian dollars a month. In order to earn that much money, that means you have to spend a lot of time in Australia because you're going to earn those money from, from the layover allowance. But the Thai crew's allowance is less than half what the Australians get. It's very tough for us because we still have to stay in Melbourne for at least one or two days. If we earn only $30, what can you eat for $30 in two days in Melbourne? It's almost impossible. I, I know that it's sometimes we have to sneak to cook in the hotel. Sometimes we also have to bring the pots, pans and stuff. And yeah, we, have, we cook in the room of the hotel. I know that is forbidden, but... Some of us, we still have to do that just in order to save some more money. There's no law against airlines using cheaper foreign crews on flights into and out of Australia. But Jetstar's using the foreign crews on flights within the country too. And that's a legal grey area that has some staff concerned. In July, a Jetstar captain was rostered to fly from Adelaide to Darwin with a foreign cabin crew. He lodged an official complaint with the airline, writing... I thought it was odd that international-based cabin crew were able to operate a domestic sector. I'm not entirely satisfied this arrangement complies with Australian workplace law. That route between Adelaide and Darwin included foreign crews at least once a day last month. Jetstar says it had no choice because it was a busy school holiday period. And it says it was entirely legal because it was the domestic leg of an international flight that continued on to Bali. Passengers are getting on in Adelaide and then all of the passengers are getting off in Darwin. That doesn't sound like an uh, a international tag flight to me. It sounds like a domestic flight. Michael Kane is the boss of the union that represents Australian cabin crews. It sounds like these overseas workers are being put on that domestic flight because the company can get a commercial and cost benefit out of it. Part of my job and our job as the union is, uh, is to get around the country and uh, speak to cabin crew. Michael Kane says the airline maxes out the flying hours of its lower paid crews, leaving them exhausted. If you've got uh, overseas attendants that are chronically fatigued, uh, that are underpaid, poor terms and conditions, then of course, as a passenger, you have to be absolutely concerned. There are no second chances at 30,000 feet. Jetstar says its foreign crews are trained to the same standards as the Australians and that it takes crew fatigue seriously. 
Pochara Kosul Chun Vidget says he was worked right up to the maximum allowable hours in a shift. I used to work around almost 20 hours, 19, 54 minutes, 19 hours, 54 minutes. Just six more minutes, then it's going to be illegal. I do believe there are safety concerns because um, the crew should be fit at all time. Well, the only thing that has to be met as far as the legality is concerned is that the, the way the crews are trained meet the requirements of the regulator CASA. Um, whether, whether it's acceptable to the unionised workforce within Jetstar is another thing. Neil Hansford's run major overseas airlines and analysed Australia's aviation industry for decades. It's totally legal and it's to most of us an acceptable practice. It's a very small part of the Jetstar uh, uh, flight crew. Let's fly Jetstar! Well, we all want cheap fares, we all want to go to our leisure destinations and uh, we don't want to pay more than we have to. So one of the offsets may be that on some routes it may be a composite crew with uh, people who are not Australians. But foreign cabin crews say they shouldn't be the ones paying the price to keep airfares low. This is a fact of life that we are human and we don't need discriminations. We need fair in working place and also we need enough money to live and for savings for the futures.